part 3 of the Bedrockfontein 4x4 route covers the fairly easy going section from the 13th to the 20th kilometer. In 4x4 terms, the grading for parts 1 to 3 are only grade 1. This allows for easy driving and many opportunities to spot the wildlife. Along this particular section, you're likely to see kudu, baboon, bushbuck, cape fervid monkeys and of course warthogs. If you intend driving this route, we recommend watching the orientation video first, followed by all the videos in the correct sequence as they contain important information on your safety, the history of the area as well as tourism. The Bedrockfontein 4x4 route follows a pass built by Sir Harry Smith. It featured during the Anglo-Boer War when a commando under the leadership of General Smuts was involved in a skirmish with the British force that was moving up over the pass. A number of British soldiers and horses died during this event which took place shortly after many in the Boer commando had suffered severe food poisoning after eating the green fruit of the cycads. Names of the soldiers can be seen carved into some of the trees. Most of the intersections are clearly signposted via permanent green concrete markers. Always check that you're on the correct road. Depending on water levels in the rivers, some sections might be closed and alternative route options might be necessary. It's important to have a good map of the reserve or at worst a high definition screenshot of the Google Earth imagery so you can identify the different routes and how they interconnect. The Kaboja River is an important migration route for eels. They use the river as a route from the ocean to the maturation grounds in the upper reaches of the river. The river's importance as a migration route has been exacerbated by the transformation of the flow of the Sundays River due to human impact. Amongst the mammals that you can see in this region are leopard, bushbuck, kudu, common dacre, blue dacre, caracal, baboon, lynx, jackal, bush pig, mountain reedback, hippo, warthog, clipspringer, red hartebeest and ostrich. Over time the clipspringers have basically disappeared from the area. At the 9.5 km point, you can turn left to go to the Mvubu camp where there are bright facilities and a basic shower and toilet. Fishing is also allowed in this camp. Further along at the 15 km point, you can turn right and head up to the Kaboja guest cottage which sleeps up to 6 people. Beyond the Kaboja guest cottage turnoff, there's a gradual but persistent deterioration in the road quality. It seems that Sandpox maintains the roads to a reasonably high standard up till this point. We filmed this route in exceptionally dry conditions during December 2017 and as can be seen, all of the river crossings were bone dry. In wet conditions, each of these crossings will require an inspection and a walkthrough to ensure that your vehicle doesn't drown. Some of the dips through the drifts are surprisingly deep. This will add a lot of extra time onto your journey, so make allowance for that. One of the more rare plants that you're likely to see on this trail is the long-leafed or Zierberg cycad. It grows in places with good drainage, usually on steep slopes. The plant stands up to 3 meters tall. Stems are long and heavy and usually totally above the ground. The stems of the older plants often grow at an angle. Leaflets have an entire margin of 3 teeth on the lower margin and they're relatively long, ranging from 3 to 20 centimeters. Commonly seen in the deeper forests of the Eastern Cape is the old man's beard. This is a wispy beard-like plant which is a lichen. It generally tends to grow on the side of the tree facing the direction from which the moisture comes. Lichens are a symbiotic relationship between an algae and a fungus. They both benefit from the relationship. The fungus provides a covering for the algae thus preventing it from drying out and the fungus is a decomposer and is able to extract nutrients from dead plants or animal waste. Be sure to watch part 4 of the Bedrockfontein 4x4 route.